Hi, welcome back to our lecture series on the history of Louisiana. It's part of our sophomore level history class surveying the history of Louisiana beginning in the earliest, well, pre-colonial times actually, up into the present. Today's lecture will be on the history of legal gambling. That's the title, Legal Gambling in Louisiana. And we'll be talking about, we'll be talking about some of the aspects of legal gambling here in the state, which has a long history. Uh, legal gambling has been allowed in Louisiana at various times um, throughout its history from the colonial days up into the present. Other times, uh, gambling has been illegal in Louisiana. And it's gone back and forth. It's been a very controversial subject here in Louisiana, even in my lifetime. I can remember some of the controversies about bringing back legal gambling in the state. Other times in the earlier part of the history, the state government has sponsored uh, gambling. Uh, other times it's licensed it. Other times it's kind of farmed it out to, we'll be talking about the Louisiana Lottery Company of the late 1800s, for instance. Today, there is a very large and thriving gambling scene here in Louisiana, not only with um, lotto and that sort of uh, lottery style games, but also with casinos in New Orleans, uh, other towns, Shreveport, Baton Rouge. If you're familiar with the area, Lake Charles has a very many, but does have a Las Vegas style strip actually over there in the uh, southwest corner of the state that draws in people not only from Louisiana, but a, a lot from Texas and other parts of the country as well. Now this particular lecture will be uh, on part of our series about talking about the economics of the state and uh, also the um, talking about the economy in general and also part of the culture. Uh, gambling has always been a big part of the culture. People have liked to bet on anything, some games of chance, horse racing, that sort of thing here in the state. And also New Orleans in particular has been a tourist destination for well back in the 1800s and gambling was a big part of that. People would come down here on river boats and by other means such as the railroads when they came in, uh, in particular to gamble. And this is mainly in New Orleans, but it's spread since then. We'll be talking about the politics. There's been a number of uh, elections that have turned on it, referendums. Several governors, uh, again, dating back from the 1800s up until Edwin Edwards uh, in the late 20th century, who have run campaigns based strictly on uh, establishing and allowing gambling here in the state. And so we'll talk about that. Now, note on talking about legal gambling. We're not talking about illegal gambling. Uh, no one but some mobsters, corrupt politicians, and crooked cops really support illegal gambling. <laughs> but there are people who do support it, trust me. Uh, we'll be talking about a lot of the politics that go around it, but we'll also be talking about the economics and what it means to the state in terms of revenue brought in, in terms of taxes, in terms of tourist dollars brought to the state through gambling and how some of the residents have felt about it in the past and the present. Again, it's been controversial. Uh, legal gambling has not had universal appeal here in the state. There's been people who strongly support it and people who strongly are against legal gambling here in the state of Louisiana. Let's take a look at legal gambling here in Louisiana during the colonial period through uh, the end of the Civil War here in Louisiana. During the colonial uh, period, the French colony built a number of cabarets and billiard halls in New Orleans where legal gambling was permissible. And this was even before building a church. So you can see how important that was to the culture of the time. By the middle of the 1700s, uh, Louisiana officials had passed ordinances outlawing gambling and other activities during religious services because they considered vices and also uh, considered that they took away from church attendance people practicing these uh, legal betting games. 
They limited the prizes for the games of chance, and finally uh, it became such a problem that they ended up uh, prohibiting gambling altogether. This is the uh, French colonial authorities. Uh, none of these measures really proved successful. Louisiana Governor Louis de Curlyleck opened a government-run casino in an effort to kind of control it in New Orleans in, in 1753. And you might say this is the beginning of official government involvement in gambling. When Spain took over the colony, um, basically they turned a blind eye to gambling. And we'll see this tactic used by other governments later in the, uh, Louisiana's history. In 1603, when Louisiana uh, became a U.S. territory, New Orleans at the time had more places to gamble than New York, Philadelphia, Boston, and Baltimore combined. So you can see, gambling was a big part of the culture down in Louisiana, primarily in New Orleans, but throughout the colony, I dare say. And so entrenched was the practice of gambling that when the federal government banned gambling in the territory in 1812, it exempted New Orleans. Later, after Louisiana became a state, the government's uh, official policy on gambling um, swung back and forth between tolerance and intolerance. In uh, 1866, we'll see the uh, Louisiana State Legis uh, Legislature create the first Louisiana Lottery, and they authorized a private corporation called the Louisiana State Lottery Company to operate operated. Uh, the Louisiana State Lottery Company will be hearing more about. It plays a big part in the history of legalized gambling in the state. This lottery was uh, the first lottery in Louisiana authorized by the state. Now, the Louisiana State Lottery Company paid a small annual fee, but no state taxes. And the company was uh, very controversial, even at the time. Uh, many people felt that they were not paying enough into the state and receiving way too many uh, profits in return. Not only that, there was a lot of claims of corruption, paying off officials, not paying off prizes, and all of this contention within around the, the company ended up in a, a, a sort as a source of several different lawsuits. We'll see it through the end of the uh, 19th century. Again, uh, some people support it, some people didn't. Uh, the Democrats in the legislature uh, passed a law in 1879 to abolish all the lotteries. And in return, uh, the Louisiana State Lottery Company took them to court, uh, appealed, uh, filed suit against this law, and the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeal forced the state to honor its contract. They were successful at first, but in the appeals court, the uh, state was forced to honor its contact, contract with the corporation. Interesting point in, a, in an effort of uh, early marketing and uh, influencers, the uh, company hired ex-Confederate generals PTG, PGT Beauregard and Jubilate early to promote the company. And as you know, Beauregard was a very popular general in the state, being a native of the state of Louisiana. And of course, Jubal Early had uh, quite a reputation from the war. After winning the lawsuits, the profits for the uh, Louisiana State Lottery Company really soared. Uh, they sold tickets around the country through the mail. And at that point, approximately 90% of the company's profits came from sales outside the state uh, using the United States Post Office. They was not without their controversy and were not without their problems. Uh, trouble came when the state dem demanded higher fees. Again, we mentioned that some of the controversy about them is that many people, uh, legislatures and other, uh, legislators and others, felt like the state was not getting enough of the profits. And so they demanded higher fees, and then also uh, several anti-lottery governors like Francis Nichols and Murphy Foster were elected, who ran on a platform of abolishing the lottery. 
none of this was really successful. What kind of put the final nail in the coffin was when President uh, Benjamin Harrison sponsored a, a law prohibiting lottery sales and advertising through the U.S. Post Office. And as we mentioned, about 90% of the uh, lottery company's profits were from outside the state. Once this law was passed, that was uh, lost, and the state ref uh, failed to renew the company's license, so it eventually went out of business. This basically ended legal gambling in the state for the next 20 years or so. As we move into the 20th century in the history of legalized gambling in Louisiana, we're going to see uh, a return uh, of uh, legalized gambling in the state. For instance, in the 1920s, legal paramutual betting on horse races at the New Orleans fairgrounds um, was the only officially sanctioned form of gambling in Louisiana at the time. Uh, illegal casinos continued to operate and the state alternated between raiding these operations, ignoring mentioned the Spanish colonial government had ignored them, and there was periods in Louisiana when this was uh, true as well. Also, gambling was a big source of funds for the mob down in New Orleans, and they ran a lot of it. And of course, this was a, a source of corruption, paying off officials, paying off cops uh, to look the other way. So we can see that uh, Gambling never stops in Louisiana. We're talking about legal gambling, and that has its high points and low points. As we move into the latter part of the 20th century, uh, the collapse of the state's oil-based economy, and as you may know, uh, oil and offshore rigs was a huge part, is still a huge part, I should rather say, of the economy in Louisiana. So in the early 80s, there was a downturn in this industry. And Governor Edward, Edwards, uh, in 1986, uh, started to promote the expansion of legalized gambling. Uh, Edwards was a very popular president, uh, excuse me, governor of Louisiana, served four terms. And we'll see uh, how this turned out for him a little bit later. Uh, Edwards' proposal failed in a special sense to try to get the legalized gambling in. However, uh, his successor, Charles Buddy Romer, was a conservative Democrat uh, who opposed the state lottery as well as casinos. He was elected governor. And the finally, what uh, as a compromise, the legislature put a referendum for a constitutional amendment that would allow a state lottery before the people in 1990. Here in Louisiana, um, state amendments, state constitutional amendments are voted on by the people. This time it passed and the lottery began in 1991. Then as other states such as Mississippi approved casinos, uh, Romer uh, approved 15 riverboat casinos, slot machines, and video poker. Again, as a compromise, uh, the casinos all had to be on a riverboat at that time and uh, land-based casinos had not come out. When Edwin Edwards was re-elected, uh, he began to push to bring land-based casinos, uh, which were eventually successful, and now there's casinos, uh, as we mentioned, across the state, in North and South. It was after the five years after Congress passed the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act in 1988 three Native American tribes in Louisiana, then uh, recognized by the federal government, negotiated compacts within the state to open land-based casinos. So, uh, so we've seen that legalized gambling in Louisiana has been a big source of controversy. People have been strongly opposed. People are strongly for legalized gambling. Uh, it's come. It's gone. It's been supported. It's not been supported. There's been a lot of strong feelings from different groups. Uh, a lot of religious groups also talk about the what comes with legalized gambling, addiction, corruption, organized crime, prostitution, and other things. Many groups talk about the revenue that has come into the state. It now brings over a billion dollars into the state each year, so it's a big source of revenue. I look forward to your uh, thoughts in the discussion portion of whether you think gambling has been good or bad for Louisiana. Thank you.